Today we're going to build a chatbot powered by retrieval augmented generation that uses data from the NIH to produce its results. Let me show you how. For example, we might ask, what amount of vitamin C should I take as an adult? And when we use this query, we're going to get back a response that uses these different sources to create the response. And using retrieval augmented generation, we can go back into the sources and fact check and verify where these numbers come from. What's special about RAG is that we're mitigating the model's tendency to hallucinate answers by giving it information from a known source. In this project, we're going to use the NIH application programming interface page, where currently we have about 80 to 100 pages of fact sheets that look something similar to this. And using some Python code, we can take all this information and we can then use some little tricks and Langchain to give the LLM when it's needed. So let's build this thing in 100 lines of code. And the first step is to open a code editor. After you've opened a code editor and created a new folder for your project, we want to create a virtual environment. And this is just so we can keep track of all our packages. So I'm going to do python -m venv venv. And then to activate our virtual environment, we're going to do source .venv slash bin slash activate. And if you see this on the left hand side, that just means you're activated your virtual environment. And then we can install all required packages. According to the Langchain web page, we want to install all of these packages and the command you can found in the description below. And once that is completed, we also want to export our OpenAI API key. There are ways to not use OpenAI, but for this video, I will use the OpenAPI to create our embeddings for our documents. So you would do something like this, export OpenAI API key, and then you would paste your key right here and then it should work perfectly fine. Next, we want to create a new file and I'm going to call it chunking.py. So in this file, we're actually going to get a list of all the pages we want to retrieve, then the code for retrieving the documents, splitting the documents into smaller pieces, making embeddings out of them so we can efficiently search them, and then storing that on disk. So step one is to get the links of all of these fact sheets. So we want to look for tags that are links that include HTML. And we do that using this code. So we're importing requests to make web requests and also beautiful soup to query an HTML page. Next, we define the base URL, then get the response. And then we parse the response as an HTML page using beautiful soup. And then we find the links by finding all link tags or a tags that have the string HTML in them. And then we just construct the paths by appending this href link to the base URL and removing everything in Spanish. Next up, we want to retrieve, chunk, and index the web pages. So we're going to use the Langchain web base loader to take all of these paths and download your contents. And we save that in docs. Then, we're going to use the recursive character text splitter to take each HTML document and split them into 1,000 character chunks with a 200 character overlap. So what this does is it takes the entire content of the page, divides them up into 1,000 character chunks, and just make sure that we have a 200 overlap so that we don't miss important context in these junctions between chunks. And finally, we save this information to disk. So we're going to import Chroma, and then the OpenAI embeddings and the settings. And from here, we're seeing that we want to create a new Chroma. We want to set the splits, and that's our documents that we created. And then we want to convert the text into a numerical representation. And this allows us to use some similarity functions to efficiently find matches in our documents. We see that we want to persist this into a DB file that's just going to show up here. And because we're working perhaps with some more sensitive data, we can also say that we do not want to send any information to the Chroma client. So we want to try and keep this as local as possible. When you've saved that file, you can go back to the terminal and do python3 chunking.py. And what it's going to do then is going to get all the web paths, it's going to fetch the content, 
it's going to shunt them, it's going to index them, it's going to store them into a Chroma DB that we can use later on. And when that's done, you should see the Chroma DB being created right here. Next up, we want to create the UI so we actually can use this thing. So I'm going to create a new file at the top level here called app.py. And we're going to use Streamlit to create the UI. So first, install Streamlit using pip install Streamlit. Then in app.py, first we want to import all the necessary packages. And the first step we want to do is to use load the vector database and prepare retrieval. So similar to before, we want to initialize a new vector store and we want to open up the Chroma database that we just created. We still want to use the OpenAI embeddings, but we're going to use the DB. And similar to before, we want to turn off any um, information being sent to Chroma. Next, we define our chat open API and use the GPT 3.5 model, but you can of course change this to whatever model you want. And then we say that we want to use the vector store as a retriever. Next step is we want to prepare the prompt, i.e. what's going to be sent to the model when we want to generate this answer. In this case, I prepared this system prompt that just says that it's a friendly clinician at the NIH, that we really want to answer as truthfully as possible, and that we will be uh, any kind of retrieved information to use. And then we construct a prompt using the chat prompt template where we say that we have the system prompt, which we can see right here, and then the input that we're going to be the query. And then we construct something called a question answer chain, which they have already prepared for us. So we can just pass in our LLM and a prompt. And then we have the chain that kind of puts all of this together. Then we're going to define the page. So I just included a little title and a little info box, which you can change to what you want to say. And then we let the user type in a query by using the st.chat input. And then we can use check. If we have a query, we can then say that we want to display this query. And then we want to generate a response. So using our previous rag chain, we can then use the rag chain dot invoke with the input as our query and get the result. And the result will contain two things. We got the answer, which is the actual generated answer, but also the context where we can find the source link. So here I'm just writing out the result answer. Then I'm writing out the sources by going through all the documents in the context and writing them as a bulleted list and pulling out the source link, where I also just replace the space with the special URL percent 20 to make the link clickable. And with that, we should be able to save this, go back and do streamlit run app.py. And what's going to happen then, we're going to load the database that we just created. And then we're going to be presented with a chat box that we can use to query. So again, let's try. Um, how much vitamin C should I take? And when we do enter, we're going to generate a response. And what we have here is then the response generated and where we got that information. And we can keep on asking questions. What are some vitamins that people often miss? And then we will have a chatbot that is informed by these pages to generate a response. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and uh, how to build this retrieval augmented generation LLM using the NIH API. If you found this helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. And again, the code is in the description and anything else, just let me know in the comments. Thank you and have a good one.